Hey, just a heads up out front. This is probably gonna be a three minute straight, if not two video long, basically self promotion about the lighting art that I did for my final project at DigiPen. If that's not really the reason that you follow me and you just like the comic book stuff that I post, go ahead and skip this one. I, I won't take it personally. It's essentially going to be like three minutes of a slideshow with commentary. So I, 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 don't worry, I'm good with it. Anyway, with that out of the way, not too long ago, I posted a video showing my progress for my final project that I was doing for the school I recently graduated from, DigiPen. I was studying to eventually become a lighting and or props artist for video games, by the way. Still looking for a job? Hit me up if you know anybody. And my final project was two relights of two separate scenes, one being in Unity Engine and one being in Unreal Engine. At the time, I had only finished one lighting setup for the Unity Engine relight that I did. However, for both the scenes, I did two separate lighting setups, meaning by the end of it, I ended up doing four different lighting setups, two in Unreal and two in Unity. And judging by the response to the previous video I posted about it, I thought you guys might want to see. Oh, and if you want to see all of these pictures in like high resolution and not, you know, horizontally on a phone screen, you can actually find these all on my ArtStation account. Just artstation.com forward slash jmorton. Here it is on the mobile app. And you can actually see all of the other artwork that I've done on there. All right, shameless plug out of the way onto the actual work that I did. I am actually going to move this video off to the side and just show you guys the actual high resolution images because we're here. So fuck it, right? All right, back, back to the actual video, whatever. Okay, so how I'll run this is that I'll just show you the original lighting that the scene came with and then the two different lighting setups I ended up doing with it. Cool, cool. Also, really wish that TikTok would let me be in the borders, but that that's not gonna work, so okay, fuck it. So this is the Unity scene that I did, and this is the original lighting that the scene came with. Here's my initial relight, where I was trying to make the scene look like Florida in the summertime. And then here's the second relight that I did, where I was trying to show that same Floridian summer, but at sunset. Keep in mind, for the rest of the scene, those two lighting setups, the middle of the day and at sunset, both during Florida in the summer, that is the, that's the vibe I'm going for. Here is the out-of-the-box original lighting for the second camera. Here is my middle-of-the-day lighting for that and the sunset lighting of the same shot. I love this camera angle. Camera four, out of the box. Camera four, middle of the day. I love these shadows on the, on the tombstone here. And then camera four, at sunset. I love the gradient of the sky, how the clouds kind of get brighter as they go back. Oh, such a good skybox. I'm glad I was able to find it. Camera four, out of the box, I changed a lot because this entire camera angle changes. But here's my middle of the day for camera four and then my sunset of this same shot. By the way, this is the same church that you saw in the previous shot at the graveyard. Also, I added a lens flare right here that it, it's so subtle, but I really like how it turned out. Camera five, yet another camera that I changed the hell out of after I actually started working at it, but here is the out of the box lighting. Here's what that same house looks like in my middle of the day lighting that I did, and then the sunset of the same shot. Again, I added that little lens flare there. Oh, it turned out so good. Also, it's kind of hard to see in this camera angle, but I did add a light at the front door. If you look hard enough, you can see it. And then what is probably my favorite shot of the entire lot, here is camera six out of the box, my midday lighting of that exact same shot. I just love the shadows, it turned out so cool. And then the sunset of that same day. So when it comes to lighting, Unreal is a lot stronger in terms of like just what it can do in its base form. And because of that, the lighting in the base scene that I got was a lot stronger in the Unreal scene than it was in the Unity scene. So the changes look less like improving lighting that was already there and a lot more like adding different lighting setups to a scene that already had decent lighting. Case in point, this is the out of the box lighting for the scene that I had. When I saw this, it gave me a very like Californian day sort of vibe. Like this looks like a street corner in Northern California is the way that I saw it. Just the sun, the fact that everything is dry, even though there's puddles, all of, all of it. And my goal was to take this scene and move it to where I'm from, which is Washington State. And to do that, I did two different lighting setups, one midday and one at sunset, much like the other scene that I did. So with all of that out of the way, here is camera one in Washington, which is the one I did. A lot of the details that I did was really just making everything look wet. Well, wet and overcast, that's it, gray and wet. That's really, the, that could be Washington state motto. And here's that same camera at sunset. While all of the street lights were already in the scene, I added all of the like blinds and the, uh, the lights behind the windows that you see. It's kind of hard to see on my phone screen, so here it is zoomed in on my computer, but all of these, these blinds and all the illumination coming out of them, that is stuff that I added as well. Here's camera two out of the box, and here is my lighting setup for it. Another thing that I added that I'm personally really proud of is that the dry areas on the ground under the awnings is something that I added on top of the textures, which are just made to look wet entirely. And here's that same shot at sunset. It's really subtle, but there's actually light streaks on the ground coming out from the door, but it's incredibly subtle. I can barely even see it on my computer screen. Here's camera three right out of the box. 
camera three, midday, again, you can see those dry spots on the ground. Another little detail that you might not be able to see on the phone screen is that if you zoom in, there's actually water droplets on top of all the metal railings from the rain that has obviously recently happened that I actually based off of my personal railings of my house at home. And here's that same shot at sunset. You can actually see little lighting streaks coming out from the blinds on the tables. Here's camera four straight out of the box. Camera four, midday in Washington with all the rain specs and the overcast sky. And then that same shot at sunset with the extra little highlights added. And then here's the final shot, camera five, right out of the box. Camera five in the middle of the day, again, all of the little metal tables and stuff have raindrops where they would actually have raindrops. As well as my personal favorite, which is the raindrops on top of the umbrellas. Here's a zoomed in shot of those details just to show you what I'm talking about. And here's that same shot again at sunset. Thank you guys for sticking around. I know this isn't my usual content. And if you want to see these a little better, feel free to go and check out my art station. And hey, if you know any studios that need a lighting artist, feel free to shoot me an email. All right, see you guys in the next one. Damn it! So I just got out of Doctor Strange 2. In short, fuck that was good. Like really fucking good. I'm gonna try and keep this completely spoiler free. A little background, I don't really like, like, fantasy. Magic has always been a thing that I don't super love even in superhero stories. I was never really a big fan of Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is one of my less favorite Marvel movies. He's never been one of my favorite characters, even in any of the group movies. And I honestly was not excited for this movie. I'm not a huge Sam Raimi fan. I was really worried about all the multiverse stuff. I was, I was not excited. I literally only went to see it today because I was worried about getting spoiler bombed. I am the exact opposite of the target audience of this fucking movie. And son of a bitch, Marvel Phase 4 is killing it. That was awesome. The whole time, the whole time, it felt like I was watching a fucking comic book. It's a superhero movie. It's supposed to be feeling like watching a comic book. If you know, you know. So few superhero movies capture the feeling of watching a comic book story. No Way Home got it pretty good. This fucking nailed it. Given, this is my initial impression, so I can't... I Take take it with a grain of salt, because I literally... I'm in my car from the movie theater. I'm still fucking wet from the rain, but God, fuck, that was good. They weren't too heavy-handed on the cameos. They didn't jump the shark with the multiverse shit. The visuals, God, the visuals. It's good. It, it's really good, is, is the long and short of it. Did I 100% love it? No, there's still, there's still some Sam Raimi-isms in there that I didn't really like. Some line deliveries are really fucking hammy. Some things that are just there feel just like a little bit cheesy. But like when the worst thing I have to say about your superhero movie is that it felt a little cheesy sometimes, I mean, come on. I really didn't want to like this movie. I did not want to like this movie. That it's zero part, zero part of any part of this movie. It feels like it is meant for me. I really didn't think that it was going to turn out, but holy shit did it. So yeah, if you have the ability to fucking go see Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, holy shit. Books, I mean buying comics. Because while it may be free for you to pick up those books, He's right. Before I get started, happy free comic book day, everybody. I hope you're gonna have fun going out today and picking up your free books. Go support your local comic shop. And by that, I mean literally. Go, like, support them. Don't just pick up the free comic books. If you haven't watched Moose's original video, he was saying how actually free comic book day isn't free for the actual comic shops. They need to buy those books. Free comic book day is a comic shop holiday. It is not a comic industry holiday. It is a sort of marketing holiday to boost your sales by bringing people into shops to pick up free books, and hopefully they'll end up picking up actual other comic books. The books that are provided on free comic book day are not actually free to buy for the comic shop. They need to buy the books. They need to buy that stock to, to be there in their shop. Are they cheaper than other comics? Sure. But also, like, the whole point of Free Comic Book Day is, is to get you into the shop so you can look at more than just the free comics that are provided. To bolster your interest in the industry the other 364 days of the year. I'm hating on you if you're going in just to pick up the free comic book. No, no, I'm not. But I'm speaking from experience here. Go and support your local comic shop. If you're going to go in for Free Comic Book Day, pick up, pick up a t-shirt, pick up a pop figure, pick up a graphic novel, pick up a single issue of a comic book that's not the free one. Your comic shop will absolutely love you for it. Free Comic Book Day is actually what got me started reading comic books. Hold on, let me go get... Howdy there. That comic right there, that is a comic from Free Comic Book Day that actually got me started into actually being interested in comic books. I don't remember what's in the story particularly, but I remember that it is a story in between episodes two and three of Star Wars with Obi-Wan and Anakin doing something on, like, I think a forest planet. I think I remember them riding like a lizard or something. But my point is Free Comic Book Day doesn't just need to be the obligatory day where you go in and pick up a random book. It could be the start of your comic book journey. It could be whatever you want it to be. But please, please, please support your local comic shop. They probably need it and they would absolutely positively 
absolutely love it. Happy free comic book day, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna be talking about Doctor Strange 2, but this video doesn't really have any spoilers, so just, just stick around, let, let, hear me out. Before I went to see the movie, I saw a bunch of things telling you what you should see before you watch Doctor Strange 2. Like all the prerequisites of information that you need to have before watching the movie. That when even I watched, a lot of that's bullshit. Like, there is a lot of stuff that plays off of things you already know. The movie is very situated as a part of a franchise, but it's not, it's not as ridiculous as people are making it seem. There's really only four things you're gonna have need to have watched to, to really understand Doctor Strange 2. And those are Infinity War, Spider-Man No Way Home, WandaVision, and one other thing. Oh, right, uh, the Doctor Strange 1. Pretty much after watching all of those, you, you, you got it all. Like you might be missing a thing here and there, but it's all stuff you can pick up through context clues. So yeah, don't be intimidated by the giant list of shit you need to watch to be able to understand this movie. You don't need to have watched all the Marvel shows, including Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to understand it. I hope that helps out a little bit for anybody wanting to watch the movie. Hey, this is a short video advertising a thing that I worked on, so if that's not really your thing, then uh, go ahead and wait till the next one. But I just wanted to show something off, see if you guys wanted to check it out, so... Remember a while ago where I said I worked on video games? Well, the last game I worked on as a student at DigiPen uh, is actually on Steam now, if you want to check it out. It is a horror puzzle game taking place in a large Victorian mansion, and I was actually the lighting artist on the whole game. You play as a small porcelain doll trying to escape the mansion, solving a variety of puzzles to actually get out. I worked on this game with my team for about three months. Uh, I was the sole lighting artist, but I was on a team of about 20-ish people. I just realized I haven't said the name of the game. The game's name is Ceramic Soul, and it's actually getting a couple of actual views. Like, people on YouTube have actually done full playthroughs of the game. It's crazy. I know when I've showed off my lighting art in the past, people have said that they wanted to play a game that I worked on. So, if you want to check it out, Ceramic Soul, now on Steam. Hope you guys enjoy. See you in the next one. Ah. <laughs> uh. I'm about to lose some respect. So I just finished reading a, a second run from a particular comic book writer that uh, gets a lot of hate online. And I mean, you know what, I'm not, I'm not afraid to say. If, if this writer has some like deep shit or reason that people don't like him, then, I, then feel free to let me know outside of like a bad run that he did. But like, I really like Tom King stories. I know to anybody who doesn't read comics that that's a fucking nothing statement, but if, here's two book recommendations for you, and the books that made me think that this guy's a really good writer, because I really like his stories. First of all, his Mr. Miracle run, to this day, is still one of my favorite comic books of all time. It is such a thorough look at, at depression and what it does to somebody and the attempts to escape that feeling. It's so fucking good. And also, I mean, this was the book that invented... Which, I mean, like, every writer since that was literally put into that comic book who has used that character has used that fucking line. So it is so, it is so fucking creepy in the book, I swear to God. It, if you have not read this, you should. It's amazing. And then the book I just finished reading that he also wrote is Strange Adventures, which I'm... How, how many people are Adam Strange fans to start with? Like, this isn't really a character that most people know about. This is essentially like John Carter meets, like, Flash Gordon. And he was able to turn this character into an actually intriguing war mystery. And while Mr. Miracle made Mr. Miracle one of my favorite characters of all time, Strange Adventures made me absolutely adore Mr. Terrific. A lot of misters. Weird. Maybe that's why I get it mixed up all the time. Like, I just did... Look at this. Do I need to say anything more? That's just fucking hilarious. Oh wait, hold on, I do need to say something more. Because he says something more and it's fucking great. You, Earthman, did you dare touch me? You hit me, I hit you. What the fuck you think fair play means? I mean, come on! Listen, I know people don't like his Batman run. I get that. But if you are, are on the fence about Tom King as a writer or you don't like what he's written so far, I. Read Mr. Miracle and read Strange Adventures. They're both really, really good self-contained stories, and I think they really highlight where this guy's strengths are. I mean, plus the art of like Mitch Garrods and Doc Shaner, you can say whatever the fuck you want about Tom King, the dude works with amazing artists. Plus, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I just kinda wanna spread some positivity. I have not seen one nice thing said about this guy since his Batman run. And after reading these two stories, I don't fucking get it. So if you're on the fence about Tom King, check out Strange Adventures, check out Mr. Miracle, and then d d come and tell me what you thought. Tell me I'm fucking wrong. Tell me I'm a fucking idiot. I don't fucking care. Just read the books, they're great. I, I don't, TikTok, what? 
What the fuck is this? It's a video about me recommending Tom King books. The literal worst thing you were shown in the entire video is Mr. Terrific bitch slapping someone. I didn't even curse that much. There's so much more fucked up shit I should have shown from those books if I knew you were gonna sensitive content it anyway. Love it here. So happy I have more time for you two. Woo! Oh, I need something to distract myself. <sighs> I'm okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. It's fine. Welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, the weekly, not weekly show where I pick one character at random out of the League of Regrettable Superheroes and then I run the fuck down. It's hope Mr. Terrific's not in this bitch. TikTok's gonna get angry! I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm calm, I'm fine, we're fine, we're fine. Was Dark Side is that fucking scary? We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Let's pick a character. Listen, buddy, I am having a, uh, just a stellar fucking day right now, so you are going to give me a new fucking character on the first try, or I swear to God! Penny, money, money. That fuck. You, you, Dynamite Thor. What? D am I reading Dynamite Thor? Is that? Is that? I think it did. When did he go bald? Is that Dynamite Thor? Is it just a guy who flies and throws dynamite at people? Who the fuck is this? Why is this so shaked up? He's just fucking nose diving in and bombing a motherfucker. Apparently for the second time. Why is the smoke in 3D? I do not care how stupid this guy is. This is certified not regrettable. This is fucking gorgeous. Oh my god, it's so much better when you read it. Dynamite Thor was created by Wright Lincoln in Weird Comics number six of Fox Feature Syndicate in 1940. Dynamite Thor's real name is Peter Thor, the world's leading expert on explosives. This motherfucker has one superpower. He is explosion proof. It does not matter what it is. If it explodes, it doesn't fucking affect him. And this is reason enough for him to strap on a costume and jump out the fucking window and start blowing the fuck out of criminals. He literally just throws explosives at bad guys. But wait, Panda, why is he flying on the cover of his first issue? Oh, he's not flying. That belt that he has has explosives in it and he consistently blows himself up to fly. He doesn't use a jetpack, not rocket boots. This motherfucker just straps a bomb to him himself and says fuck it his name isn't even dynamite thor in the story he's just called dynamite and you would think being explosion proof would make him basically invulnerable right nope he could still be shot he could still be knocked out he could still be punched it's literally just fucking explosions oh my god not regrettable i want a fucking triple a movie of this guy yesterday this guy was in the same comic as the blue beetle that means dco i want this motherfucker in the suicide squad too now so I just got back from a wedding, hence the attire. And I don't know about anyone else who wears suits regularly, but I don't really get the, the the suits are uncomfortable and I don't like wearing them mentality. Like honestly, if I could wear a suit every fucking day and not be the guy who wears a suit every day in, in society, I fucking would. That and capes. If I could wear suits and capes every single day and I wouldn't be that guy who wears a suit and a cape all the goddamn time, 100% would dedicate to it fully. But for somebody who is known for doing a high voice to pretend to be a Skeletor character and joking about men in tights online all the time, I have a surprising amount of shame, so that's probably not gonna happen. Speaking of those men in tights, welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, the weekly not weekly show where I pick one character at random out of the League of Regrettable Superheroes and then I rub the fuck down. Let's see who we're getting today. Give me someone good, please. And you. Fuck you. Rainbow Boy. Oh, that's cute that they had the subtitles in rainbow colors. Eh? It's gonna be a good episode. Why does the helmet look like that? You're telling me your name is Rainbow Boy in your costume in two colors? Does he make rainbows when he flies? Is that a genie in a sequined shirt made out of gas coming out of the gas tank of an exploding race car being piloted by an out of ammo polka dot man being fucked up by the fucking Rainbow Boy? Pride Month is literally next month. Why couldn't you wait one month? Why are they on a racetrack? Was this you trying to blow up a racetrack? What is your plan, Rainbow Boy? What the fuck are you trying to do here? Are you trying to catch this man because your buddy exploded out of his gas tank? If so, where the fuck did you come from? The stands are back there. You flew in from the white sky. This guy is essentially Billy Quizboy from Venture Brothers with the powers of the Flash plus Green Lantern. Rainbow Boy was created by an unknown creator in regular feller Heroic Comics number 14 in 1942. His secret identity is one of Jay Watson, a boy genius who appears on the Wizard Kid radio program. It's essentially a quiz show for juvenile geniuses. You know, like I said, Billy Quizboy, essentially. While conducting experiments with light at home, he found out that if he absorbed enough light, he could travel at the speed of light. 
Oh, and also make rainbow colored constructions out of hard light. This doesn't need to be sunlight. I'm talking like if, if you shined a spotlight on him, he could absorb that and then fucking just pew. He only appeared nine times and mostly alongside Hydro Man. No, not the Spider-Man villain, this guy. I will say though, I don't think this guy is fully regrettable. Like give him a better costume, flesh out his origin a little bit and throw him in the DC universe. Fuck it, got it, you're good. Hell, when DC did an event where Stan Lee recreated all of their famous characters, this was essentially his idea for the Flash. So with all of that in mind, I will say regrettable for now, but with a lot of potential. At least have the rainbow extend to the back of your fucking head. In your opinion, what is the greatest name in cinematic history? I'll go first. This right here is probably the single easiest question I will ever have to answer. This character has appeared in popular media once and then was never seen again. Despite that, he ranks amongst the top of my favorite characters in all of media. He speaks exclusively in grunts. He both got his ass kicked by and kicked the ass of WWE wrestler Sergeant Slaughter. This man has one-handed Cobra Commander's head like it was a fucking basketball. This man rocks exclusively shades of purple, red, and pink. He is essentially a flying bodybuilder with swords in his elbows. This man's legal name and the one and only correct answer for this question is Nemesis Enforcer. Watch G.I. Joe the movie. I will never stop hyping this shit. So I, uh... I very rarely get any paid partnerships at all. I'm not complaining. That's not a, a big issue for me. I don't do this to get, you know, partnerships and everything. But I, I very rarely actually get, like, sponsors that reach out to me that hope for me to support their stuff, okay? Would you like to know the unfortunate string of events which has led to today? I had the honor of being able to partner with Viz Media to promote their new Samurai Deadpool manga. Here's where the problems arise. You see, I got the book the same week that I was graduating. And then I took a week-long vacation immediately after it. And then since then, I've been trying to kind of adjust to living back at home again. So it has been almost a month where I have had this book that was freely given to me by a company for a character that I really, 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 really enjoy. And I have just not done anything with it. So I am really, truly, desperately hoping that, um, that I didn't burn a bridge here. So with all of that said, let's talk about Deadpool Samurai. This book is a true blue, straight from Japan, Deadpool manga. This is not a Deadpool comic made in the style of a manga. This is an actual manga made with the Deadpool character. And take it from me, someone who does not usually read manga. I am a basically purely comic book guy. This is a pretty good Deadpool story! This is a really good Deadpool story! I think I could probably sell you on how well it does Deadpool in like two pages. <laughs> the moment one becomes a hero is almost always cruel. When the time comes, you may be forced <coughs> to make someone do the incredibly difficult things that no one else will do. I really didn't want to have to do this, and I'm gonna feel bad. <sighs> <laughs> You feel bad for me. Nope. For the assistant who's got to draw the next page. Wait, what? I mean, come on. Were you already flipped the page? You monster, it took the assistant three days to draw that spread. That moment is this far into the book. That's almost how the story starts. Listen, if you love Deadpool as a character, heck, if you even like Deadpool as a character, I suggest that you pick up this book and give it a read. I am not by any stretch of the word a manga guy, and I still read and love this book. If you've been looking for a new Deadpool story, go check out Deadpool Samurai. And thank you to Viz Media for sending me a free copy. I really hope that I didn't burn every bridge with you by putting this out so late. I'm sorry, you hit me at a really weird time in my life. Okay, so I made a video, like, maybe 15 minutes ago that was answering why Robin wears bright colors. And there are way more questions in the comments than I thought there would be. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through a couple of the things that, that I saw that are pretty common questions in there. First off, wasn't Robin's bright color scheme supposed to contrast with Batman's dark color scheme? Like, wasn't he trying to make himself a little bit, like give himself a foil, a more bright and colorful foil? That was the editorial reason for Robin. Like Robin was originally created specifically so that children reading the books would have somebody relate to instead of just having Batman there. Another question I saw is if this was the reasoning for why Robin wears it. Why do characters like Damian Wayne not wear those super bright colors? Why are their colors mostly black? Well, with Damian, it's because he was raised by the League of Assassins. He ain't gotta earn shit. Hell, if anything, Batman needed to calm that kid down. Same kind of goes for Cassandra Cain. She was literally trained to fight, to talk. 
And her mom is Lady fucking Shiva, so she doesn't really need to earn anything. Also, she wasn't a Robin, so. There's also the fact that the Robin outfit is actually su originally supposed to be kind of an extrapolation of the Flying Grayson's outfit that Dick Grayson wore. Same way as the, the Robin name being a nickname that his mother gave him that he adopted into his superhero name. This one can be thought of as true depending on the timeline that you're reading. If that's the canon explanation for you and you'd like that one, fuck it, that's, that's great. Like, I know that's a lot of people's canon explanation for why Robin's colors are bright, and I think that's totally reasonable. However, depending on, like, the, like, true comics canon version of Robin that you're reading, sometimes the Flying Grayson's outfit looks like it did in All-Star Batman and Robin. These green ones with the gold design on the chest. And then the Robin suit is wholly made up for Robin himself. Same with the name Robin. It kind of depends on the version if it's actually a nickname that his mother gave him. I personally like that version, but it kind of depends. And then finally, one of the last questions that I saw that was getting a lot of traction was, uh, why does the signal wear bright colors then? And that one is because the signal isn't trying to hide. The signal wears all yellow, and that's because he is the daytime hero of Gotham. He's supposed to be hopeful. He's supposed to be somebody that people can see. And on top of that, he's a meta. He has superpowers, and those superpowers allow him to manipulate light. So the more light that he attracts, the more that he can actually use it. That last one is completely made up by me, but I think it sounds reasonable. <laughs> I just wanted to cover a couple of these questions because I saw a lot of them popping up because it is, ki it is kind of ridiculous to hear somebody say, oh yeah, Batman dresses this kid in bright colors so that he gets shot at so that he can learn to hide better. I hope all that helps. All right, I've seen this audio everywhere. This is a really popular, like, Jason Todd audio, and it if you haven't seen it, it's asking Siri, why does Batman only wear dark colors? Well, because Batman doesn't want to get shot. Well, why does Robin wear bright colors? Well, because Batman doesn't want to get shot. Super funny, hilarious. I I'm not going to debate that at all. And I'm not going to debate that because it's kind of true. Look, I only say kind of because it's a little bit more he wants Robin to get shot at. God, that sounds fucking terrible. Okay, he wants Robin to be visible to criminals so that he can still learn to hide in the shadows even when he's dressed like that. Like, if Robin is this bright splatter of colors and he's still able to hide in the shadows, then it'll make it even easier to hide in the shadows when he's in dark colors. Essentially, he wants him to learn how to hide in the shadows regardless of what he's wearing. Yes, this comes from the New 52, but it does get my point across. Won't, like, everybody see me out there? Do you know how to use the shadows in the night? No, but you wear black, you rely on the dark. It becomes your crutch. Someone takes it from you, and you fall. Wear your outfit so that they will see you. Then beat them when they see you. When you're ready, wear mine. Earn the night. So yeah, it's a little bit less that he wants this child to, to pull the bullets away from him so that he doesn't get shot, and a little bit more that he wants this child to pull the bullets away from him so that the child does get shot. Much better, 10 out of 10, grade A parenting right there. You can see why after they graduate from being Robin, every Robin ends up wearing mostly black with like one or two accent colors. Should I make this into a skit? Probably. Have I had a long day and I don't want to do that. Absolutely. So I want to talk about something. So one of the more famous Superman stories there is, is for the man who has everything. It's a story that takes place on Superman's birthday where Mongol attacks him and traps him with a symbiotic plant called the Black Mercy. It's a plant that paralyzes you while feeding on your aura, and while it's attached to Superman, it feeds him a hallucination of his greatest desire. It does that for everyone, not just Superman, I don't know why I specify- whatever, we're continuing. While all of this is happening, however, since it is Superman's birthday, Batman, Robin, and Wonder Woman end up coming over to celebrate with Clark. And from there, the story proceeds kind of how you would imagine it to. Batman and Robin and Wonder Woman, of course, they get the Black Mercy off of Superman and they defeat Mongol, of course. I'm not saying this to downplay the story, it's an absolutely amazing story and you should absolutely read it. Or if you don't want to read it, they made a really good Justice League episode off of it where they just don't have Robin there. But that's actually the part I want to talk about. See, while this is a really famous Superman story that has been adapted in multiple locations in multiple different ways, people tend to forget that the Robin that's there was Jason Todd. And not only was it Jason Todd, but Jason Todd was the person to finally take the flower off of Superman. Which, by the way, Superman's hallucination in his mind is that he's had a family and a son on Krypton who he had to seemingly abandon to come back to reality. All of the memories of which he still has when Robin takes the flower off. So understandably, he's, uh, he's a little mad. He's really fucking mad. So what's my point? What am I trying to get at? I think that Jason Todd should have a slight subconscious fear of Superman. Not Kryptonians, 
Superman. I think that not only would it provide a really good contrast between him and Dick Grayson, because Dick Grayson's favorite superhero is Superman, as well as cementing the story in canon forever, but also it would really make sense. This would be fucking terrifying to a child. Superman has rarely ever been that angry in canon ever. So the idea of Jason Todd looking into the eyes of a god at 15, a very angry, rageful god, that would leave him with some shit. And I think it would provide some really good contrast between the characters. It's some really good character development for Jason Todd. It would make more sense why Wonder Woman is his favorite superhero. By the way, if you didn't know, Wonder Woman is Jason Todd's favorite superhero in canon. Because she was also there, but she was being a hero the entire time. Don't get me wrong, I don't want Jason Todd to hate Superman. I just think it would be a cool little thing to add to his character. Just to, just to spice up the character relations, just a little bit. I don't know, that's my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you guys agree. Do you think that this would be a really cool thing to add into canon, or am I just talking out of my ass here? Superman should be lean. And by that I mean I don't think he should look like a bodybuilder, like 300 pounds of pure muscle like he's usually drawn. The longer I exist in the comic book sphere and the longer I like actively engage with it, the more I find myself being a Superman fan. I think everybody in their journey of either knowing about superheroes or existing in like the comic book sphere goes through this stage of either disliking or just straight up hating Superman. He's basic, he's overpowered, why doesn't he just solve all the world's problems if he has the ability to? All those sort of things. And I feel like the longer you exist in comics, the longer you accept that Superman's not supposed to be that. He's not supposed to literally be this sort of god-tier character that can solve all the world's problems. He's meant to be a little bit more metaphorical than that. Superman as an entity, for one, being just sort of a fictional power fantasy, like he was originally created by two Jewish creators in America and he solved, like, social problems. Landlords, abusive husbands, that sort of thing. A sort of, wouldn't this be great if this existed sort of thing. Like, he was this pure good ideal of what an otherworldly savior could be created by two Jewish boys in the 1930s. The literal implications of his powers were not really supposed to be looked at all that hard. However, comics are a collaborative medium and the character has shifted since then. Of course he has, that's kind of the point of the medium. Well, how does any of this relate to his physique? Well, to me, character's physique tells a lot about them. Spider-Man shouldn't be bulky as shit. He's an acrobat, he flips, he jumps, he twists, he does things that human with bones shouldn't be able to do. He shouldn't be this bulking tank. Same with Nightwing. Nightwing shouldn't be too big. He's an acrobat. He should have big shoulders and a big back, but still be pretty lean everywhere else. I'm not diminishing Nightwing's glorious ass. He should absolutely have that too, even if it doesn't make sense. But neither of these characters should be drawn like these big hulking brutes, right? Same with Iron Man. He should look a little bit more like a normal dude. He doesn't have to use his muscles all that much. He's got the armored suit for that. If he's drawn giant, it doesn't really make all that much sense. Well, I answered this a little bit ago in my uh, Why is Superman Ripped video, but Superman in our world shouldn't really have muscles. Like nothing would be able to strain his muscles enough to be able to tear them. Have there been situations that have torn his muscles that have definitely put a strain on him? Absolutely. And that's why I'm saying he should look lean, a little bit more like just kind of a normal dude who does CrossFit and a little bit less like fucking Hulk Hogan. Not only because logically it just makes more sense for him to be a little bit more lean, but also that relates him more to just this common man mentality. If he looks more like the common man than a god, then seeing him as sort of a metaphor of the best version of a common man makes a little bit more sense. Or at least it's a little bit easier to follow. That's why I really like how John Kent is being drawn right now. Current Superman has that a little bit more leaner physique. And Henry Cavill notwithstanding, Christopher Reeve is my second favorite Superman. I don't know, that's my interpretation. I think that Superman should be more of a leaner muscle build, or at least look more like a normal human being. What do you guys think? Do you guys think Superman should be this bulking god or should he be more lean, more like a normal person? Let me know in the comments. So, something I started picking up recently is Red Hood figures. Action figures, or, or figures in general of any of the Robins, are pretty hard to come by if you just want, like, a base model and not one of those, like, super fancy, did Forest Edition Robin. Any of those bullshit. So, I started collecting, like, like Nightwing and Red Hood and all of those. I, I still have yet to find a really good, like, Robin Robin, like a Tim Drake or, or just Robin figure. Anyway, that's beside the point. I started collecting Red Hood figures, right? So far, I have three, and there's a pretty common thing that comes with every Red Hood figure, considering the character a gun or or guns because it's red hood and red hood uses gun he, that's like his thing he's the robin with guns i know he doesn't use guns in the comics right now don't 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 at me i don't care so i just picked up the gotham knights red hood figure that they just recently put out for the game coming out and uh homeboy's got guns but they're uh 
They're finger guns! This man has no weaponry! How is that even possible? Here's your Nightwing, sticks sold separately. I'm not mad, it's a good figure, it's just... It that's like his thing! These intros, I swear, they're getting longer and longer every time. Anyway, welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, the weekly, not weekly show where I pick one character at random out of the League of Regrettable Superheroes and then I run them the fuck down. Any, mini, miny, you. You, 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 we'll go with you, you're new. Zippo! Uh, like the lighter? No. N not like the lighter. I see you're rocking the uh, Rainbow Boy Noir headgear here. Wait, isn't this just Go-Go Tamago's thing from Big Hero 6? Like the ankle wheels to go fast thing? Isn't this, this is literally the same thing. They even have the color scheme. It's either an insane coincidence or somebody at Disney is reading in. I swear to God, if the tie into Zippo lighters are the fucking wheels that he is wearing, I am gonna lose my shit. All right, t t come on, man. Everybody knows that good color schemes come in threes. Superman's got red, blue, and yellow. Batman's got gray, black, and yellow. T t yellow, red, blue, and purple. Pick one to lose, man. To be honest, this dude's just kind of boring. Created by Pierce Rice in Clues Comics number one in January of 1943, Zippo's real name is... I fucking lost it. Joe Blair. His name's Joe Blair. Joe is a private eye and part-time inventor who created an exoskeleton below the belt made of carbon... Carb... Carb... The, the fuck? Carborundum. Carborundum. God, I love fake metals. If that is real, I am going to be fucking blasted in the comments. His carborundum exoskeleton allows him to travel at super speed. At... 65 miles an hour. He can travel at, at the fucking highway speeds. However, I'm assuming that's because he's weighing them down, because they can also apparently speed fast enough to cut through metal, which is much faster than 65 miles an hour. No, he has absolutely nothing to do with Zippo lighters. In fact, this dude lasted eight issues and then was just fucking canceled. I mean, I guess you could bring him back, but like, would you? There's so many better speedsters already. I don't know. Regrettable? You can bring it back if you want, but why? Oh, it's so good not to be sick anymore! I think that there should be a new plane ticket invented specifically for people who want to bring babies onto flights. First class, business class, coach, and then fuckers with babies. Oh, and you should have to pay more if you don't live where you're bringing that baby. It should be a checkbox that you have to fill out. Did, did, do you live where you're going and are you bringing a baby? Because if those two don't match up, you're paying twice as much for your ticket. Ignore me. I'm bitter. I got fucking sick for two days because I got two consecutive flights with sick babies! And ignore me even more because if any of the critiques that I just levied were true, I wouldn't be in the fucking United States because I was brought here from Japan as a baby. So, <laughs> All of that to say, welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, the weekly, not weekly show where I pick one character at random out of the League of Regrettable Superheroes and then I run them the fuck down. Give me something good, baby. Mini, mini, miny. You, 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 fuck it, track it, I already got you, fuck you, you, fuck you. Who is it? Who the fuck is this? Hold on. Did I already get you? Fuck you, did, fuck you, 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 I got. Did I get you already? No, I didn't get you already. But, uh, Pat Parker and the Warner. I don't know much about nurses, but I don't think that that is a healing tool. Also, Jesus Christ, Pat Parker is not fucking skipping leg day. Holy shit, man. Is he screaming from the debilitating cramp that he's getting from the tightness of the short shorts combined with the straps around him? Because Jesus fucking Christ, that is tight as hell. You know, honestly, outside of the fact that he's not wearing pants, these costumes are not uh, not too terrible. There, uh, there have been worse costumes that I've seen in relation to World War II characters. So this, this, this is pretty, pretty good so far. I will say, this does just feel like pantsless Captain America with a gun fetish, though. So I, I will not speak too soon. Also, this Warner's way less creepy than this one. Okay, I have been saying this wrong the entire time. It is Pat Parker Warner's. It, it, it's one it's one name. 98% sure that this guy is actually called Captain Freedom and has nothing to do with Pat Parker. So we're not we're not even gonna address this fucker anymore. Got it? Good. Pat Parker Warner's was created by one Jill Elgin in Speed Comics number 13 in May of 1941. She started out as like a regular pulp hero, just a war nurse in, you know, th what was happening in 1941. But after her original publisher of Brookwood collapsed and Harvey Comics ended up buying all of the rights to the characters, she was revitalized into the war nurse. One of very few female superheroes at the time. In her day job, she's a war nurse during World War II. In her superhero identity, she's the war nurse gun-toting badass who fights the bad guys of World War II. And that's about it. And I mean, honestly, with a couple, like, costume revitalizations, because high-waisted short shorts and a crop top isn't exactly what I would call bulletproof. I seriously think this character could have some legs. No pun intended. There's not a whole ton of baggage, and there's, like, a ton of potential here, so yeah, not regrettable. And that is going to be it for this month. Thank you all for being just so 
so patient with me over the last couple of months. I especially want to thank all of my very loyal patrons, Andra Lanowitz, Anna Eliza B, Background Joshua, Benjamin Hadler, Bill Bro, Blue, Brandon Laney, ButterGuys51, Carol Cowett, Cassie Pace, C. Randy Gamble, Danny Walker, DeCassowary, Diandra, Dragon Fang, Fuck Me Ray Bradbury, Gas Boss Gate Light Girl Keep, Jeffrey of Isles, Jenny Chanti, JJ, Cat Stevens, Linda Mackert, Magu, Pandora A, Patricia Chops, Pinchy McGore, Raymond Villasana, Ricky Tiki Davi, Silent Princess, Sring, Tarara, The Holy Corota, The Lady Ray, The Fire Branded, Theresa Harrison, T.S. Famder, Tyler Ellis, Unique Apple Pie, Victor Viral, and Who Knows as well as all of my other lovely patrons over on Patreon. And thank all of you for being so patient with me while trying to get these videos out. I know it's been a long time, and I know this is the second time in a row that this has happened. I promise I'm putting all of my effort into this now. It's not going to happen for the July ones. Thank you guys for being so patient. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.